Hi! That was loud. That was so loud I startled myself. Sorry, headphone users. Hello, Jaina P. I asked a Frenchman if he played video games. He said, We oui. did you have that you had that copied, didn't you? You had that copied and you were waiting for the exact moment I went live to just paste that into the chat when you a terrible joke to kick it off. Hello everybody. It's not cool as snood, said somebody. Calm your tits. Wow, so much sensory input. Um, I'm not going to even have a little chat because I prepared a tweet. Oh no, where did it go? <laughs> I wrote a tweet. Wait, there. Yeah. <laughs> it was in a hidden window. I was like, oh no, I'm going to have to write a tweet again. That'll take me ten years. Yeah, although I can't do the weird Danception thing now because I'm on the laptop that I usually show that with. Oh my gosh, and it's working. Hi. Hello everybody, how are you? So, um, I'm not in my bedroom today. Sorry, <laughs> I'm about to cough violently into your face, that wouldn't be polite. Um, <laughs> uh, I'm not in my bedroom because it is so messy. Unlike previous weeks where it looks fine and I'm telling you that there's a, a mountain of laundry to the left and right of me. It is literally so bad that there was absolutely nothing. It would have taken me 20 minutes to just clear the the cone of vision <laughs> that you could see from my webcam. So today, we're in the lounge. Ooh, how exciting. It's a mirror. It's a, it's a Super Note trophy. It's a Radio Academy Award. It's a card from Tumblr. A Domo. Buffy the Vampire Slayer box set. What else have we got here? A weird Instagram photo of me and my dog that some company mailed me. Don't know how they have my home address. Uh, a Bulbasaur on some PlayStation games. Two bottles of True Blood. And that's as far as I can bend over. So there you go. I am wearing a Skyrim t-shirt this evening because I am a colossal nerd. There we go. That's just what I wear when I'm by myself. Hey Beyonce, nice butt shaking. Right, so... <laughs> Our shirts are matching, are they? <laughs> right. So I guess the first thing on the talking agenda is YouTube Rewind. Who watched that? I'm just, I'm just going to cough into this pillow to just get it out of the way. Say your YouTube Rewind comments into the chat while I just eject my lungs. <coughs> Gross. Hi. Um, <laughs> that was crazy, wasn't it? Can you even, if you don't know what I'm on about... Brief, I mean, have you been on Twitter today? Uh, YouTube Rewind is a video that YouTube have made every year for the last three years, I think, which is basically kind of like a giant mashup of all the most popular, most viewed music videos on YouTube, mixed with all of the viral videos of the year, recreated by YouTubers. So it's a giant YouTube fest. And this year, um, was the first year where they said they were going to make a real effort to make it international. So they actually flew an entire camera crew and studios and a whole bunch of crap all over the entire planet to get YouTubers from everywhere in. And, oh my god, that was insane. That must have literally taken, like, a thousand billion years to make. <laughs> it was very awesome. It was cool. Uh, so some of the things that happened, guess the crime, PewDiePie dropped through a ceiling into a classroom. Uh, why was everybody wearing blue? I think they just wanted to, to all look <clears throat> cool, and uh, cool, cool and coordinated. So the bit that me and Phil and some other people from the UK and I think his name is Cyprian. Is he the biggest French YouTuber? He gets like 10 million views from doing a Q&A in his apartment, I don't know, it made me very, very sad when I watched it, what's his name? I need to find that out, because I'd never heard of him, Cyprian, Cyprian, his name is Monsieur Dream, and he has six and a half million subscribers, and he does Q&As in his apartment that get 10 million views. <laughs> um, he, I met him, he was really nice, he was really cool, uh, so yeah. That's what, if everybody was wondering what the hell everyone was doing on that day where they were wearing blue stuff four months ago, that was about. They told us, uh, 
because they wanted us to look like a coordinated classroom that we all had to wear blue because blue and yellow was the theme. So we all had to wear our bluest clothing. Phil had no problem turning up with his bluest clothing. So he was like, I got blue shoes. I got a cool new blue shirt. Everything's fine. But I, <laughs> I looked in my wardrobe and I was like, I literally don't own anything blue other than a pair of jeans that are arguably blue, but they're, they're really, they're, they're kind of black, even though they're really blue. <laughs> and basically the, what they said was, because you have to coordinate, you can come wearing as many blue things as you have, but if you don't have any blue things, you're going to have to borrow them from the wardrobe department. So I turned up and I was like, I've got kind of dark blue jeans, and they were like, yeah, they're basically black. And I was like, and I've got a black t-shirt, but I figured it because I'm wearing kind of blue jeans, it's okay. And then I got black shoes, but that's okay because they won't see my shoes. And they're like, no, everything needs to be blue, so you need to <laughs> borrow stuff. So this woman was like, you can have this blue cardigan, okay, and you can have this blue t-shirt from Primark. Everything was from Primark. They gave everybody shoes from Primark. <laughs> and then one of the women said, I don't think your outfit is complete. You look a bit flat. So I was like, thanks. Why don't you have this? And I was like, what the hell is that? And she made me wear a snood. Uh, if you don't know what a snood is, it's a scarf mixed with a hood. Uh, it's like a big chunky knitted thing that you can wear over your neck. And if you're walking outside, you can pull it over your head like a hood. So uh, I was wearing the retracted version of a blue snood. Great, great. <laughs> so ev everyone was fine doing the whole thing and all of their actual blue clothes that they owned. And yet today was the first time that I suffered immensely as a result of only owning black items of clothing. They sound twattish. They are quite twatty. I remember the first time snoods when was, was Snoods like 2013 or 2012? I remember, I don't remember. I remember when All Saints tried to make Snoods a thing and I was just, everyone was like, no. <laughs> I'm sure a few of you like them, but not for me, not for me. What can I say? Not a Snood guy. Do you like my fire, by the way? Lisa Michelle F proposed. Oh, thanks Lisa Michelle F. Thank you, Erin, for saying, I cried in a room full of teachers. Why, why did you cry, Tori? You twerked, you're Miley Cyrus. Yeah. So, um, they, uh, as part of their, this is what everybody in the classroom scene is going to do. They were like, you all need to learn a dance routine just so we can cut to it for bits of a medley. And it was supposed to be a joke. Why am I, I'm playing with an SD. I ordered a 32 gigabyte SD card. That's how exciting my life is. Um, so we were learning this dance routine. And at the end of it, they were like, no, everybody just freestyle, do whatever you want, and we'll keep it in the videos. Then everyone was like, um, do you want us to just, like, freestyle dance? Then everyone was like, okay, well, let's just, let's just be stupid. So then everyone was doing stupid dancing, and they were like, keep it going, keep it going, keep it, we need more footage, just keep it, the more we have, the better it goes, so just keep dancing, keep doing different things. And everyone was like, I don't have any more dancing left to do. So everyone just started getting completely ridiculous and apparently apparently when I didn't because there were like four cameras the main camera was on the other side of the room doing something else didn't think anyone noticing apparently there was some guy with a camera that was just lurking behind me like an A-grade creeper just zooming in on my butt so shout out to the YouTube guy with the camera for zooming in on my butt and including it during a little bass wobble in the video. Great, that's my lasting legacy on a video that will probably have a hundred million views in a couple of weeks. <laughs> Great. But what did you think of the video generally? It's pretty awesome, wasn't it? It's just so epic how people put it all together. Oh my god, it must have been so much effort. They went to like Brazil and America, Japan. Crazy beans. Tyler Slade. Tyler in his crate, in his silver suit. That was pretty amazing. Connor shooting the, the ice beams in the frozen land. I loved PewDiePie's bit. That was obviously quite amazing. I wanted it to be faster. What were you doing? What were we doing? We were um, our little bit of the video because everybody's referencing different bits. There was a viral video. If you haven't seen it, it'll probably make you cry. 
<laughs> where a girl is pregnant and she's telling her dad that he's about to be a granddad over a meal. If this is one of my friends saying, I'm watching you, then I'm going to be disappointed. Um, <laughs> uh, and the way that she reveals to her dad that she is pregnant is by passing him a box with a pacifier in it over the table. And you see this granddad go, why did you bring me here? What's this about? What's this about? And then he opens the thing and he sees a dummy and he's like, this is, this is something you'd give a baby. Then she's like, here, I'm 10 weeks. And the granddad just starts going, I'm going to be a granddad. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was exciting. And that's the thing that we had to recreate. So I'm not entirely sure. 46 seconds ago, that was YouTube to <laughs> At YouTube, better not be watching this live show right now. Stop. <laughs> is someone that is... Okay, right, I'm, I'm going to tweet you. Are you... Are you watching my live show like a creeper? Or was that just really well-timed BC IDK? Right. Let's wait for that tweet. That would be horrifying. No one's allowed to do that. Not even my friends. Dan, I am at YouTube. Person in the chat, you are not at YouTube. <laughs> at YouTube came to our house earlier. Congrats on your pregnancy. Thanks. It's good. The Danaconda strikes again. It did, didn't it? You made a typo. I noticed. But we don't talk about that because YouTube have... 47 million followers or whatever, um, so we're not going to talk about my typo because it would technically be the biggest typo I've ever made in my life, wouldn't it? Mm. Is it out the video? Yeah, go to youtube.com slash youtube to see the YouTube Spotlight channel and it will be the video that they uploaded called YouTube Rewind 2014 Turn Down, no, YouTube Rewind Turn Down for 2014 Exercise Talk about Connor. Talk about tour of your brain. What first? Did I see Connor Francis' video? Of course, I saw Connor Francis' video when he when he started when he got a bit teary at the end. I I cried. I was watching it like, <laughs> and then oh, it was so adorable the way that he sincerely said that he wants everybody to just be happy with who they are. I was like. Yes! <laughs> so that was good. Aren't we all happy? There's nothing like other people crying to make people cry, is there? It's like the one, the, the ultimate waterworks generator. So that's good. If you don't know who I'm talking about, a YouTuber named Connor Franta, go to his YouTube channel. Probably the only person on the internet that may didn't know that. I watched it while I was in college. Did you cry at college? Probably. I think no matter where you are, you'd be you'd be crying. But we're all very proud. Do another deal. Do another deal. We uploaded one last night. Bloody hell. <laughs> I cried in class. Don't watch videos in class. You never know you could watch if you watch the last Sims video in class and don't watch our gaming videos in class. Because it was twenty five minutes long. You would have missed the whole class. Uh, definitely don't do that. But, 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 but what are you holding? I'm holding a t-shirt. Why do I have that? Because I got changed in this room earlier. There we go. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Is the chat broken? No, it's just like a waterfall of craziness. Say hi to Alex. Hi, Alex. I love your mirror. Thanks. It's like red pixels. It's Coolio. Are you going to play any more Outlast? I don't know. Just because it would be, be so... I'd have to do like 10 videos maybe, and like, um, I just, I think you'd like it, but I don't know how much I love the game, because there's so many games that I'm like, I really want to make videos about them right now, and a lot of people have played Outlast, like, I don't, I don't like playing games that other people have done lots of Let's Plays of before, Whereas things like Five Nights at Freddy's and Slender, they're quite good things to do as a one-off because the entire game is basically just the same thing as opposed to a long, big story. But who knows, maybe, maybe you'll convince me that I'm stupid and I should continue it, and I will. It's all up in the air. Play Borderlands or by myself. Is that even possible? <laughs> booty, booty. There was a lot of booty in there. What was your favourite bit? 
you're not allowed to say my bit. The ice bucket challenge. I love the bit where Hank and Green, Hank and Green, Hank and John had their little uh, conversation over the ice buckets. That was good. I liked that. That was fun. Good video, YouTube. Yay. One thing I felt the only thing was <laughs> that the way that they edited it made it all look very sincere and not very self-aware. So if you're not aware that everybody was kind of joking around, because like with our, with our dance routine and all the dancing, we were messing around. The entire thing was a, a giant look at us being stupid in a way that was supposed to be funny. But I'm concerned that if you don't know that, it kind of just looks like a cheesy music video from High School Musical. You know in Glee, there was like Glee when it was great and Glee when it got kind of bad and Glee when it got kind of bad was when you were like, I don't get it, is this supposed to be like a funny song or is this just a bit of a, like why are they doing a Michael Jackson tribute that's not funny for any reason? And it was a bit cringy because there was no like self-aware sarcasm to it anymore. I'm worried, so just so you know, it's not cheesy. Everybody was laughing. <laughs> I, my favorite bit was Ian and Anthony <laughs> recreating First Kiss because I ship Ian Anthony till the day I die. I don't really, that's creepy. Or do I, who knows? You're so fancy, we were, weren't we? We have that advent calendar. Well, this, this, this advent calendar, I have that next to me because I just ate the chocolate. I should have opened it for you guys. I'm not, I'm not gonna dwell on this because uh, us not making many advent calendars and selling out of them quickly is a bit of a sore subject. We're sorry. It happened with the calendars as well. Um, but I thought it'd be quite funny. So for those of you that didn't know, the Danafell advent calendar, we thought it'd be quite funny to make it a photo booth challenge inspired one. So behind every door, there's a little picture. And it started off with a nice one of me. And then where's number two? A nice one of Phil. But then they gradually descended into like creepier and creepier, horrifying portraits behind the things. So funny. Are there, is there anybody that's like chronicling the pictures behind every day on Tumblr or something like that? If not, that's a service that should be provided. It's good. Sorry that we didn't make many. I'm sorry. And the calendar as well. Um, we sold out of 2015 calendars. We're very underestimate <laughs> because we have to pay to print everything. Um, probably. Um, we will be making more 2015 calendars that will be in stock by Christmas. So if you, if your dream in life was to get a Dan and Phil 2015 calendar for Christmas and you're sad because we've sold out, you could ask for a Dan and Phil shop gift card for however much amount of money that you want it for. And then you can just order the advent, uh, order the new 2015 calendar as soon as it becomes in stock again after Christmas. So thank you to anybody that has bought one or wants to do it. Uh, and if you're sad because they've sold out, then you could get a gift card and then get it when they come back in stock for uh, the week Christmas commencing. Because I mean, like, until they like, <laughs> after Christmas, there's only so many days until 2015 starts. So, yeah, we'll, we'll try not to run out again because that would be inconvenient. We wouldn't want people to miss out the first week of the year. But thank you. But, 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 but someone just asked if Dan is into bondage. Oh, I missed that, but <laughs> thanks for highlighting it. Strip for us. That would get flagged on this uh, website, probably. How do you now moderate things? It's a question that I've always wondered. I don't know how they do it, but it's very commendable that they do. You go, you now, Coco. How long is delivery? Depends where you are. If you're in the UK, it'll probably be like the next day. Uh, if you're in America, it'll probably be a few days. And if you're in Australia or the moon, it might be like a week, but it's as fast as the post people do their jobs. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Just watch the video. Tell Phil he can't dance. That's mean. <laughs> he was dancing. I know you can. Do, 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 do. America takes a month. Uh, no, only depending on where. Ba -da -ba -ba. What about Canada? It's all the same. International shipping is supposed to take five days, but then it depends on the actual boat posting it across the thing rather than our shop. But I live on the sun. I'm very sorry. I cannot comment on the, the delivery time to the sun. <laughs> uh, 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 speak German. Ich. How do you say can't in German? I've already failed. 
<laughs> wow, that was that was impressive. That's the extent of my year nine German skills there. English middle school German lessons. High quality learning that will stay with you for decades. Can nicht. Is it just can with a K? I thought that, but then I didn't want to assume it. <laughs> so, yeah, oh yeah, oh god, what have we done since last Tuesday? Who saw the, um, the, uh, the Morpho video <laughs> on mine and Phil's gaming channel? If you haven't seen it, if you're a fan of PewDiePie's, uh, liquefying YouTubers and as much as photoshopping YouTubers, uh, you might go to our gaming channel, Danifil Games. <laughs> Phil had this app on his phone called Morpho, where, like when you're doing a celebrity face morph thing, you put dots on your head after taking a photo of yourself, but then it turns your face into this, like, horrifying 3D, like, living AI thing inside your phone, and it is the freaking weirdest thing I have ever seen. <laughs> it was so strange. Uh, so if you haven't watched that, definitely go watch that. Maybe not too late, because it is so weird. Um, but we're probably going to do uh, another one this week with some of our friends. So if you haven't subscribed to Danifil Games yet, now's a good time! Um, JK, but no really, because that'll be funny, we're doing that. And um, Dill, how'd you like the last episode of Dill? That was a good episode of Sims 4 with Dan and Phil, wasn't it, that last one? Dill gets physical. <laughs> it was a good one. It made me so... It, it just emotionally affected me in so many ways, I wasn't prepared for it before I started watching it. Just like, one day, one day in Dill's life. Do you know how fast days go in The Sims? You know what I don't like about The Sims? My one complaint is that the days where you're at work go so quickly, and it's like five days of your Sims life are spent at work, and it's like by the time your Sim has woken up and you've stopped him from dying because his fun meter and hygiene meter are in like the flashing red or whatever, it's time to go to work, and by the time he gets back from work, you need to sort out all of his needs so he's not dying anymore, and then he needs to go to bed again and then it's work again. I'm just saying, let's just spend less time at work or something. <laughs> I don't know. But in one free day, man, he did so much. He went outside, he did some digging, he tidied the house, he started some projects, he upgraded a toilet, and then he went to the gym and met new friends and came back feeling happy. I mean, that's just... If Dill Gets Physical wasn't the most inspiring video on YouTube of 2014 for you, then I just, I don't know, to be honest. Because it was, wasn't it? <laughs> In a real kind of personal crisis kind of way. Uh, 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 Susan said, I literally can't see anyone male in the chat. And then Jordan said, I live vicariously through Dill. Hey guys watching this, like, remember all the times when I go blah, 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 and then mention Sweden and then suddenly all the Swedish people go, I'm from Sweden! Hey, all the guys watching this, say hi, because everyone's convinced that you don't exist. <laughs> Matt and Derek <laughs> and Jordan and Aaron, hello, and Ryan, hi, <laughs> and Sam, hello, and Jeremy, hi, Alan, is that the same person called Alan? Did I mention Alan twice? I don't know. Stop spamming. Tarzin, hey. <laughs> There's a bloody sausage fest in here. Okay, stop. You're weirding me out. What if Dill is Sugarscape's hottest lad? Hmm. Hmm. Now, I'm not suggesting that all of you should definitely make Dill Sugarscape's hottest lad of 2014, because we need to remember the entire thing is just an elaborate ploy to get people to go on their website, and unlike when me and Phil are campaigning, you know, it, I would never want to ask for people to vote for me on a Hottest Lad thing, because that's really cringy and embarrassing, that's not what I stand for, but I'm just maybe saying that because it's a fictional character that doesn't actually exist, that it would be funny, but that might ruin the integrity of their competition. So I'm not saying that you should vote for Dill, I'm just saying that if it happened, which you shouldn't, it would be quite funny, even though it ruined the integrity of their, co <laughs> their competition. 
But um, not going to lie, I did laugh quite hard <laughs> when I saw that people were doing that. It was quite funny. Uh, 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 uh. Portal 2 Blindfolded. We were originally going to make Portal 2 Blindfolded an entire series, but then we thought that it was maybe a bit too uh, gamery and not that many people would know what Portal was. Because we thought that, like, Blindfolded Portal, that would be like... Would it even be... Imp would it even be possible in the later levels of the game? Probably not. Um, so we decided to go, hey, we're making this new channel. We should do a variety of challenges. Speaking of variety of challenges, how many have we done? Like two or something? We know what the next one is. We've got a couple ideas, actually. We just need to, we just need to feel that it's the right time emotionally and make it you and Phil Pokemon battle. Me and Phil still haven't played enough Pokemon. We're both saving it for the uh, the Christmas period for when we go home to our families and are incredibly bored for a solid week. So... Blah, 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 blah. Pokemon battle between Dan and Phil will happen in 2015. Which sounds like the future. When's your next main channel vid? Um, dunno. What day is it? Tuesday? Dunno. Maybe this weekend? Probably early next week? Depends which one I want to make. I haven't decided yet. This isn't one of those weeks where I've preordained the order of my Dan is Not On Fire videos eight months in advance. I have literally no idea what I want to make next. Uh, <laughs> Drunk gaming. That would be a bad example. <laughs> my phone is dying. Uh-oh. <laughs> Opinion on Kalel and Anthony. I believe that they're two adults that can do what they want. And if they think that it's the right decision, then I'm happy for their happiness. Scary though, isn't it? It's kind of like Charles and Ellie. It uh, shows how emotionally invested people can. It's just so terrifying. I think like Charles and Ellie was very, very extreme because of the marriage. But people just get so like... <laughs> entitled to opinions about stuff. Very scary, isn't it? But if they're happy, I'm happy because they're both very lovely people. Boop, 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 boop. Play The Last of Us. I still haven't played it for myself yet. I feel like I want to save that for myself because it would be a really emotional and intense experience that I don't want to <laughs> be aware that people are watching me while doing it. Ba, ba, ba. I'm singing Jurassic Park again. Because that's relevant to anything, isn't it? Beyond Two Souls. Perhaps, perhaps. So, about my video, who watched my Tour of My Brain video? Because that happened. That happened quite recently. When did that happen? Sunday, Saturday? I don't even know anymore. Tour of Dan's Brain on the Sunday. Woo! Did you like it? <laughs> uh, yeah. So, if you're wondering, remember, like, before my last, last video, that there was, like, a three-week break between Dan Not On Fire videos? That's because, um, the people that were helping us to make... Do I have it? I don't have the Dan and Phil sim. Um, they wanted to make sure everything was going to work 100% when people got it, so they wanted us to push the video forward by a week before we made them, which is completely fair enough. But I... <laughs> because I was ready to make that, I was like... I don't know, don't know what video I'm going to make, don't know what video I'm going to make. So then all of a sudden I had to think about what I wanted to make, which had already meant that it had been a week. And then I had to, I decided on Tour of My Brain and the process of beginning my Tour of My Brain video began. So if you're interested, the way that it's possible, um, Phil, when he came up with uh, his Tour of My Brain idea, he sat down, because we often help each other out with making our videos from, like, a, a production point of view. Um, Phil was like, I want to do a tour of my brain. I'm thinking that I can make a brain and have little flaps and say things that represent things inside it. And I was like, obviously, amazing idea. And then we had to decide how it would be possible. So me and Phil both sat down for a very long time and we were making his and then we decided that um, making a brain, <clears throat> cutting holes in it and then putting a green screen on a table and then putting the brain over the green screen 
and then opening flaps so that you can make the green invisible and then edit things that underneath it was a thing. So then that uh, it came into fruition and Phil then spent a while lovingly crafting his video and then we finished editing it. <laughs> and then mine, oh, uh, it, <laughs> it was quite funny because that week Phil, I think, did he go up north to visit his family? I think he did. He went, he went up north for like three days to visit his family, meant, meaning that I was just completely alone. I had no help <laughs> with my craft or anything. So I was like, I don't want to do literally what Phil did with the cardboard because I felt that like the, the lo-fi cardboard and the drawing and stuff like that, I thought it was very, very amazing Phil aesthetically. So I was like, I need my brain to look different. So I settled on getting an actual human brain and then <clears throat> kind of photoshopping different lumpy areas of the brain into weird symbolic hatches that I could then open like that. So I had to plan the video was the first thing. <clears throat> and that was scary because I, I had to write my little script of what my brain tour would be. But the thing is, once I'd finished writing it, that was it. I was completely committed because my script of how many doors I had, what the doors were and what were behind each doors, couldn't change after I'd finished because I then had to design the brain. So if I designed the brain and then changed my mind, couldn't, couldn't. So it was very scary because as soon as I'd finished it, I was like, this is locked down now. This is no choice. I might hate this in a week and yet it has to be exactly what I make. So then I found a brain. I spent a very long time photoshopping the brain. And then I was like, but wait, unlike Phil who had felt tips and cardboard in the house, where the hell am I going to get a brain from? So I had to look up places where I could print a, a big, huge picture of a brain on high quality paper that wouldn't rip as I was cutting it stuck to cardboard. <clears throat> so I had to go on like a five hour trek across London to this printing place to get this brain printed. And the woman was like, what the hell is this guy doing? Because I was like, yeah, could I have three copies of this giant, weird, lumpy brain with things on it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I spent like 60 pounds printing all this brain stuff out. And then I came home, cut it out. And then I was like, how the hell am I going to stick this to a... Because cardboard and shiny paper aren't very easily stick together things. So I had to go get some like proper glue. And I poured so much like intense glue all over this cardboard and then I was like okay so when I then had to put it on a table this is the thing as a left-handed person I can't cut I can't cut I can't cut out you give me a pair of scissors no idea what I'm doing can't cut in straight lines can't even draw in straight lines like when I was doing art at GCSE my teacher would get so infuriated at my inability to draw straight lines so when I got my little knife I was just cutting out plaits of this brain I was like if I, if, I, if I mess this up and slip, that's going to be a massive pain in the ass. So I spent ages just like cutting out all these little sections. And then I'm going to be real with you here. This is something that you might not realize. I didn't think when I was making this that obviously when you're making something that uses the green screen effect where well, the way the green screen works, if you're wondering what that effect means, it has a really bright green color. And then you basically put a filter over the video that deletes anything that is that shade of green. Which obviously means that you can't have anything green that you want to be visible. Because as soon as you drop this filter onto it, everything green goes invisible. So that's why, uh, like in Harry Potter, for example, Harry's glasses in Harry Potter weren't actually glass. Because if Daniel Radcliffe was actually wearing glasses, then he'd get loads of blue reflections of the Hogwarts set in his glasses. So he actually wore uh, like glassless glasses and then the glass and all the reflections in every single frame of Harry Potter was digitally put in because otherwise it would reflect everywhere. My brain, if you go and look at the video now, I didn't realize after I had already committed <laughs> going halfway across London to getting this stuff, there was the color green on my brain. I put the colour green on the things on my brain. So obviously it wasn't going to work because as soon as I dropped the filter on it, 
everything that was green on the symbols on my brain were going to disappear. So Phil didn't tell me this because I just kind of left him to edit it. But the actual process of opening the doors is painstaking in editing. You have to do a thing called, um, uh, it's like an eight point mat, which basically means you cut out like a Photoshop layer and everything in like a little, uh, you put like eight dots and then everything around it gets deleted, which meant that you had to, at the exact moment you opened a flap, you had to create a little hole for a hole to be shoved through all the layers in the video. If it sounds complicated and boring, yes, <laughs> exactly. But because the things on my brain were green, I had to do all of that twice because I had to do it all for all the layers that Phil did, but then I had to for every single frame where I was opening a flap and you could see something green, put a separate layer of cutout all the way around it. So I'd say that every section of my brain in my video probably took about an hour and a half to make. Because <laughs> I literally doubled the amount of work that I had to do. And then Phil was like, just keep it simple when you open the doors, just chuck a couple of symbols in, make them fly about, but oh no, Dan had to have Katniss Everdeen shooting Sephiroth with a bow and arrow because I thought it would be funny. I had to make a cave of regrets and somehow make some smoke filter that could somehow be an invisible layer over my regret cave whilst it was invisible. Um, so the, the second week into my three week video gap, <laughs> I had a bit of a mental breakdown because I think it got to the Friday night before that weekend, which is when I tweeted this, and Phil was like, Dan, if this video isn't only going to be finished tonight at like 4am or tomorrow, wouldn't you just wait a couple days and then upload the video talking about the Dan and Phil sim that you have to make? Because otherwise you're going to have to do it. And I was like, I don't want to accept this. I, after everything, I don't want to accept that I'm going to have to park this video. But Phil was right, like, I, whatever. So I just had to go, no. And then I made my I Can't Live Without My Phone video. And then I resumed making it this week. It was an adventure, but it was completely worth it. And it was funny because I was thinking, you know, it's completely worth it because it was so creative. And then I was thinking, wait, that's, that's a bit stupid. I hate people that say that things that are physically or visually arty are creative when things that other people do aren't creative. Just because someone does some crafts or just because someone rented a fancy looking camera and made something look all filmmakery, slightly more than a vlog, doesn't mean that it's any more or less creative than, you know, any other kind of video. So I was like, no, 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 you know, when, when I do my other videos, they're creative. So I was like, so what is it if it's not creative? <laughs> and I realized crafts, the only thing, that, the, only, the, the only real thing because it wasn't, you know, I spent a long time editing my Dan versus Phil, you know, Lion Dinosaur Crave Challenge video. That took like a billion years, and that was fine. And there are other things. So I was like, so what was what was the unique characteristic of the Tour of My Vein video? Crafts. It was all for crafts. Everything I went through. It wasn't for the sake of doing something creative. It wasn't for the sake of being creatively satisfied by the Tour of My Brain. Because of the things I do are creative. It was about being satisfied with craft skills. Crafts. It was all for crafts. <laughs> was it worth it? I, I feel like it was. <laughs> but I just, I don't know if Dan and Phil Crafts is the next logical step for us. Because unlike Kick the PJ, um, handcrafting isn't one of my marketable skills. I can't cut because of my left-handed <laughs> problem. <laughs> but it was good. It was great. I loved making something so weird. Um, a couple people were like, the Cave of Regrets was a bit sad. My original plan for the video, and it kind of was, but I wanted it to kind of start like, oh, socially awkward, relatable, blah, 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 but then just get like really, really depressing, but like really sad <laughs> in a funny way, in a comedy way that is supposed to all be funny. But then I showed a couple of my friends it, and they were like, Dan, 
I'm sure a lot of people would understand that you're trying to be funny, but if they don't, it just looks like you spent a long time making a really sad video. So I had to tone down the sad <laughs> of my original plan, which is a shame. I would have I would have liked to turn the sad the sad up to eleven, but people are right. Are you jealous of Zoe? I'm not really jealous of Zoe. If you if did you did you see my uh, my green monster? Who was that? I put I put Zoe, Felix, Tyler, Lord, Harry Styles, and Dylan O'Brien. Those are all of those people are people that you know I, I may be slightly envy of, envious of in a way, but not really. That was just a joke. They're all people that I personally look up to in various ways because of what they've achieved or who they are or how they think or how they work. So it was like a a monster of lots of people that I think are really great in various ways. But then I turned it into a joke because I ruin everything by turning it into a joke. I love your top. Thanks. Vote for Dill 2014. <laughs> hesitant Alien opinion. I liked Hesitant Alien. I don't have a really long opinion to it because I still haven't listened to it intensely. I need to. I, I, can't, I cannot honestly sit down and have a three minute conversation with you about an album unless I've listened to it a hundred times because I do not want to offer an opinion on something unless I'm really confident that it's fully formed. So if I listen to, you know, maybe in two months after I've then listened to Hesitant Alien 20 times front to back, I'll have more articulate thoughts about it. But I don't by any means think it's bad. Frickin' love Jared. Am I sick? I've had like a weird needing to cough for like a month. It might be one of those kind of colds that's not really a cold, it's just kind of there. You know? Did YouTube tweet you back? I don't think they did. I think they, they tweeted me to imply that they were just lurking during my live show, which is horrifying. I really don't want them to do that. And then they just got back to tweeting YouTubers. I think that they were just tweeting about me mentioning the butt was the thing. Like, I just tweeted, hey YouTube, thanks for that, and they said whoever filmed it was a thing. It just so happened that at the exact moment I was telling you about it, I got the tweet from them. So thank God, I don't think that YouTube were actually watching my live show, because that, be <laughs> that would be terrible. Spotify update. Have I been listening to any... Uh, I have been listening to Run the Jewels 2 all this week, and still, I am, am I, who am I? Yep, the album that I have been listening to the most is Run the Jewels 2 by Run the Jewels. Absolutely freaking amazing album. They are two guys called Killer Mike and LP, who are rappers, and have had very long, good careers as solo rappers, but because they're super best buds, they <laughs> joined forces to make a couple joint albums, and they're amazing. They're great. Phil, is he there? Phil is editing an amazing Phil video. Um, he might actually... Is that gonna... He might be, that might, he might be uploading that tonight, actually. Because it was nearly finished last time I saw. Phil is editing an amazing Phil video that he's probably uploading... This... <laughs> uploading. Someone said Lord in the chat. He's uploading a video. Get Phil. No, he's editing. God, you're so rude. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not complaining, by the way, about the tour of my... I don't want anybody to think that I'm complaining about the work. It was fun. I love it. I love life. And it was great. And I'm very happy with it. The adventure in making it and the crafts was all hilarious and fun. Do you have any questions about the symbols other than the, the envy and the cave of regrets? What else was there? Because a couple of people were like, what did you mean by this thing? Do you have any tour of my brain related questions? Because after this live show, never talking about it ever again, probably. <laughs> Hello, your eyebrows look great, do they? <laughs> I haven't bleached them or anything. <laughs> have I played Smash Bros yet? I have. Your romantic side? I didn't think of including that, sorry. I wasn't... I had my own ideas of the journey that I was going to go on in my video. Not Phil's. Young Lean reference, what with the aesthetic? It wasn't a specific Young Lean reference, it was more of a, a general aesthetic meme reference that really less than 1% of people would probably have an understand, but I just, I find myself funny and I'm an idiot who does stupid things, so I just put that in. Da -da -da. <laughs> mm -mm -mm -mm. Waifu, indeed. 
I was a bit rude about Asana from Sword Art Online in the last live show because I was saying that she was uh, reduced in a character way in the second season, which she definitely was. But I think in the current season of Sword Art Online, it's all been totally Asana-centric and it's been very awesome and I'm happy because I'm sure all the people that loved the first season of Sword Art Online, the anime, about people that get trapped in an MMO, but then if they die in the MMO, they die in real life. Okay, right. If you don't watch anime, just, like, you, you'll probably really enjoy it. It's this really, it's not a cartoon. It's something that's, it's meant for people in, like, our weird age, but it's like, before you're 12 and not the kind of old people that aren't on the internet, anime is just kind of like this perfect thing that you watch and ruins your life, and it's good. Um, you can go on a website called Crunchyroll and watch them for free with adverts. They're cool. Are you really explaining anime? I'm explaining anime right now. Um, but, yeah. Uh, what was I saying? New season of Sword Art Online, all about Asuna. Great, because I love the character, and it's making... It's good character. And the plot twist about the plot twist and the sickness, no spoilers, and the oh my god, unexpected horrifying feels out of nowhere. How could you do that to me? Wow. Last thing I was expecting. Oh my god. Uh, was it, it hit me by the truck. But um, yeah, I'm watching an anime called Haikyuu about kids in high school that play volleyball. And it's amazing. It's absolutely amazing. It's great. I love it. It's like everything I know. <laughs> I've, le I've learned so much about volleyball from watching this anime, I feel like I actually, I want to go watch videos of volleyball at the Olympics because I can now actually understand the sport. I feel like, you know when I, I joke, I joked about Dill inspiring me about sports and I joked about things, I might make a video about this one day, so I, I reserve the right to repeat everything that I'm about to say, but I feel like my school when I was in primary school and maybe my parents and anybody, I think that enjoying sport you need to kind of understand the game. And the thing is, I never understood the actual rules of football. I never understood the actual rules of rugby. I never understood the actual rules of tennis. So when I was in like high school games classes and everyone was like, play tennis, me and my nerdy friends just used to mess around hitting balls onto the roof of the sports hall because no one told us how to actually play. And I kind of, I feel like I resent my teachers in primary school and secondary school because my, my parents never did sport with me. So, like, my parents weren't going to sit me down and go, damn, this Saturday I'm going to teach you the rules to tennis. No one taught me the rules. So how, how am I actually supposed to have fun playing a, a sport game when I don't understand how to, it's like, you know, playing Mario Kart and not understanding that you're supposed to race and <laughs> actually go around the course and finish. You're just given a car and then you just end up running around trying to hit your friends with it or something. So I feel like, now that I understand the rules of volleyball, I could actually watch the sport and enjoy it. Because it was kind of the same with Formula One. It's like, you can think it's just cars going around in circles, but when you actually understand the drama and the politics and the context and why is everything, suddenly you're, you're actually able to enjoy it. So how many of us might actually like football, but we just know, have no idea what we're watching? I mean, football's like, yeah, you're just watching people kick stuff into the nets, but there's a lot more to it. Tennis is the one. I don't understand the scoring system of tennis, and I feel like I need to watch a tennis-based anime to watch that, because they're like, 15, love, it's the, the ace and the serve, and it's out, but not, and I'm like, Pfft. I'd love to watch Wimbledon and understand it. <laughs> So, that's going to be my goal for 2014, one of them. I'll put that on the list. Remind me. Try to work out the rules to various sports that I'd like to understand. Because the culture of tennis is quite nice. I'd like to go to Wimbledon one day, because it's just such a bloody British thing. But I'm watching TV and I'm like, look, no one told me how this game works. I have no idea what's happening. Did I say it again? Did I say it again? I'm a moron. Who remembers last Tuesday where I said, 2014 goals? Clearly, um, <laughs> I have not emotionally accepted <laughs> that uh, we're in such a futuristic year as 2015 coming. Sorry. Oops. 
Again, Jurassic Park. What is wrong with me? I am a freakazoid. The text. Did you guys? Did you guys get your um, dress up Dan text today? To to gay <laughs> you guys with the uh, Dan and Phil sim. Did you get it? Yeah, you did. Cool. Um, one of because we you know we plan little activities to say thank you to the people that did it. Um, <laughs> and the text today was uh, I'm going to the BBC on Thursday and I decided to let people choose what I'm wearing so people got texted a link to this poll and then people can vote on the poll and decide what I'm gonna wear and whatever it is I'm gonna wear it to the BBC on the Thursday and wear it so if you're outside of the UK and you cannot unfortunately have a Dan and Phil sim then at least you will be able to see the selfie. You'll you'll get the end goal of what everybody votes for. Um, otherwise, uh, can you can you still get them? I think the how many weeks has it been? No, I think you can. If you if you don't know what I'm on about, then too long to explain. But if you haven't yet, it's not too late. What's the, what's the website? E.co.uk forward slash Dan and Phil. You can order it for free. Sorry if you have a locked contract. <laughs> you can always just whack it in a 3G enabled iPad or something. Um, yeah, hope you enjoy that. There's some other cool stuff coming in the way. So if you ordered one of our sims but you haven't put in a phone yet, you should because planning some other cool stuff for the people to say thanks. Ba -ba -ba. Ba -ba -ba. Have you put your Christmas tree up? We haven't put our Christmas tree up yet and it's December 9th. So busy, you don't have time to do Christmas. How sad is that? <laughs> So busy, we haven't started Christmas in our apartment yet. Where would the tree go? I guess it would go where my uh, rock band drum kit is at the moment. There, next to the TV. That would be the plan. Do 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 do. Why am I? Yeah, no, just Jurassic Park. Absolutely no reason. Have you guys have you seen the intricacies of this T-shirt? It's amazing. <laughs> Like, okay, so what, what are all my what are all my outfits on it as I'm playing with it in my hands? We've got uh, Phil's weird lion thing, Pac-Man Dan, Pac-Man Phil, completely black leather shirts, Dan, Gengar Phil, uh, that is Galaxy Sweater Dan, Adventure Time Hoodie Phil, Leonardo DiCaprio crying t-shirt Dan, Cat Pocket Phil, Drop Dead Jumper Dan, Domo t-shirt Phil, High School Musical t-shirt Dan, uh, what else have we got? We've got uh, Phil University hoodie, we've got Dan weird football number hoodie, Phil check shirt, Dan man and dog jumper, Phil space jacket, Dan dinosaur onesie, Phil lion onesie, Dan moth shirt, so many. Yeah. Can you tell I like it? I like it! Do, 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 flawless promo. It doesn't look, it, it doesn't count as promo if I'm genuinely nerding out about something, okay? <laughs> look, look at, look at all the things on my Dan and Phil shop t-shirt. Hashtag spawns. Hashtag spawns. <laughs> no, I, I just like it. I'm sorry. Sexy end screen dance. I brought it back. I was feeling it. It was the time to do a sexy end screen dance, wasn't it? <laughs> We basically have the same brain. Do we? Sorry, that's not good. What's that on your mantelpiece? That, um, has Phil talked about that? Has Phil said what that is? The little, uh, cardboard house? I don't want to spoil something you might be mentioning in his video. That's a mirror. And that's our Radio Academy Award. <laughs> Show us your clavicles. How do I, how do I do the thing? Ew. Ew, look at it. Uh, uh, it's so deep. It makes me like, ugh. It makes me like that bone feels so. Fr is this a collarbone? I don't even know what that is. It feels so thin and fragile. I feel like I could just walk into my kitchen side and then <laughs> that would just completely snap. Gross. It's a Yankee candle advent calendar. Delicious candles every day. Mmm. It's your collarbone, thanks. Obviously, my uh, biology knowledge is incredibly poor. Sorry. Scare Phil. 
No. <laughs> uh, <laughs> sorry, don't eat the candles, Dan. I wouldn't eat the candles. Are you Dan or Phil? <laughs> really? I'm Dan. <laughs> I am the YouTuber known as Dan is not on fire. Click on the play button. Watch my videos. See if you like them, maybe. <laughs> Are you going to do Christmas baking? I don't know. I don't know if that's on the agenda because of uh, the Halloween one. Damn, those cupcakes are delicious. Doo -doo -doo. Doo -doo -doo. Will you play DDR? One day, somehow. I actually had an idea for like a DDR series that I wanted to make, but then Phil's a total hater and thinks that I shouldn't do it. So that remains to be seen. <laughs> We'll see about that. New Year 2015 vid. Oh, look forward to that. Ha ha ha. Ha ha ha. Connor, Connor, Connor. We spoke about Connor at the start of the video. You missed us all talking about how we cried immensely. Dan DR. You should vlog. Should I? Here's what I did today. I woke up. Went on the internet. Didn't go outside. Good vlog. WTF is this guy, said Willie M. Hi, my name is Dan, and I talk about nothing and touch my hair for 50 minutes. <laughs> I remember you playing DDR, you're really good. I am really good. I'm really good at rhythm games, generally. I'm like, I'm not like funny good, I'm like nerdy, kind of sad good. Um, I reach like a shelf though in all of my gaming things. Well, I'm genuinely, I'm really good at video games, but I'm not like pro at video games. Like, I was, <laughs> I used to really be into the competitive scene of Guitar Hero, <laughs> when that was a thing in like 2007. Um, and I, I can pass Dragon Force on Expert, but I can't five star it on Expert. And I just don't think I ever could. Um, Cause I just, there's, there's a skill level and pff, plateau. And uh, I just reached my plateau with Guitar Hero where it's physical, it's not mental. I can perfectly understand everything that's happening, but I, my, my left hand can't do it. It's because I'm actually left-handed, so I should be um, holding it like this because when a left-handed guitar player plays, they're supposed to use their non kind of um, stiff hand <laughs> to uh, hit the frets. But because I'm left-handed, and my left hand is used to holding things. It means that it's very slow working. It's a physical thing. And I hit a plateau with Dance Dance Revolution where it was basically my fitness, where my brain overtook my body. And it was a really depressing moment where I had to stop playing DDR because I wasn't fit enough to get better at the game. <laughs> Literally, I got to a point where I was like, I could watch the videos of the hardest DDR songs in the world. Who knows whether I've been able to pass them, but I could understand what I was watching. But I just, I couldn't, because I, I wasn't physically fit enough. And the thing is, if, because <clears throat> I used to, like, follow professional DDR players on Twitter, they're all like marathon runners, all the people that are actually, like, world champions at dance mat games. They're all like, yeah, I run like 100 kilometer marathons in my spare time. And I'm like, okay, so that's the level of fitness that you need. Great. <laughs> I can't walk up the stairs without tasting blood. I can't do four push-ups without falling over. Actually, I did five push-ups and then I fell over. Technically, I did four push-ups and on my fifth push-up, I collapsed. Either way, not good, is it? It's not great. Dan, it's past 10. I've only been doing it for 15 minutes, though. You're right, though. I should GTFO. This has been fun. The time has flew. Do a house tour, please. Do a house tour. Check this person out. When did you subscribe? <laughs> not, that, not that there's anything wrong. I don't expect everybody, but statistically, most people hadn't subscribed to me by then. Watch my back catalogue, guys. <laughs> I, I'm not like the other YouTubers on a week-by-week -week basis. Every, every, every video is like a little nugget of my universe perfectly encapsulated in a video. If you if you haven't watched my old videos, you should do it. It wouldn't take you that long. How long is it? Like six, six and a half hours to watch all of my videos? That's one evening that I can completely ruin of yours. Don't do that. 
really don't do that. That would be absolutely terrible. Um, but yeah, uh, I guess I should go vaguely soon. I think that Phil will probably have a video to upload, and he'll want me to stop slowing down the internet if he wants to do it. Do, 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 do. So, is there anything else before I leave? What is happening this week? Let me look at my calendar. I see. I see. Interesting. 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 Um, cool. Uh, on Danifil Games, we'll have that morphing video that I'm very much looking forward to making. That should be funny. I'll make another Dan's Not On Fire video. That's Coolio. Google Tool Lesbian. Tool Lesbian. Images. And literally every photo is me. Gr oh, that's that's just fine. Okay, the, the first search result when I type in tall lesbian is a selfie that I had with Tyler Oakley at VidCon in 2012. That's cyberbullying. <laughs> and on, on a very real level is quite an offensive stereotype. <laughs> Not for me. <laughs> I, have, I appreciate the joke. Oh, my word. You have 666 favourites on Twitter. Quickly sort it out. Oh no. Satan's going to favourite my next tweet. That'll be my next push notification. Uh, 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 pose for a photo. You're taking screenshots, are you? There we go. I hope that was erotic as your wildest fantasies. Play Skyrim with Danifil Games. <laughs> okay, good. Hi to Reagan and Abby. The Walking Dead finale. Still haven't watched it. No spoilers. I will stab you. Updated house tour. Uh, please say hi to Yassi. Hello. Do you do you recognize me? Because I feel like you do. Marshall underscore. I'll make a mental note to avoid rudeness in the future. Night, Dan. Night, Hannah. What happened to your personal trainer? That's, uh, am I saving that for a 2015 video? I don't know, at some point. There is a story. It's not that exciting, but it is an explanation. I loved your new video. Thanks, Imogen. Wish me a happy birthday. <laughs> happy birthday, Elena. Hi, Alana. Let's be giant nerds. I think most of the people watching this probably aren't. There's nothing wrong with that. Salami. And what did you have for dinner yesterday? A chicken. Jowl frazy. Happy birthday, Alex. Okay. Bye, guys. This one bloody flew past, didn't it? I feel like I should stay for another hour, the speed that that went. Um, have a good week. If you have not seen Sims or Morphing or Tour of Dan's Brain, go check out the YouTube videos. But if you're watching this, you probably have, so... Thank you for watching them, and yeah. Dan, if you liked Radiohead, you'd like Sigaross. I love Sigaross, and I met them at the Lovey Awards that I went to a couple of weeks ago, but I didn't want to have too much of a conversation with them because they're quite Nordic and awkward in a great way. Bye! Have a good week. Enjoy the festive run-up to Christmas. I hope it's not too stressful. Bye. Bye-bye-bye-bye. <laughs>